Hello everybody, welcome. I'm just here um, kneading up some clay. Sometimes when you're kneading up clay for making whatever you're going to make, it's more convenient to, weigh, uh, to knead up a, a large lump and then pull off from that lump smaller lumps, which you're going to you're going to weigh on your on your balance. However, if you like I am now, I'm, I'm actually weighing these up. These are three pound, three pound pieces. So what I would do in that case is first weigh the th the lump of clay, which is three pounds in this case. I mean, much more, much smaller than three pounds. Probably two pounds. I could probably manage to wedge, but. Um, it's easier to weigh them first and then just knead each individual lump. You get a better, a better mixing in the clay, uh, etc. More thoroughly kneaded. And then when I, after I, after I've kneaded the clay, I. Have it looking like a, uh, a sort of conical shape, something like that, with a sort of round bottom here. Okay. Let's just zoom the camera in quickly here, a little bit of kneading. It's all good practice, isn't it? <laughs> all good practice. The secret about kneading is try to get as much as your body weight into the process. In other words, keep your arms straight and rock your body backwards and forwards like this. Let the weight of your body do the pushing, do the grunt of the work, you see. You've got to make gravity, get gravity on your side. <laughs> so as you knead it, you can hear the air bubbles popping. You can see, you can see it in the spiral. You can see in the spiral the um, the mixing that's going on there. You see. So this is very important to learn how to do, and I recommend spiral kneading like this over any other kind. So here am I now, just finishing this off, rolling it, rolling it, you see, into that, to that conical shape. Let's just pull back the camera here, touch. Okay. So. So the, yeah, these are these are like three pounds. So we're going to take these. But first, we're going to cover up our clay here. All right, don't leave your clay open. And we'll take these over to the wheel because I've got to do some some throwing, believe it or not. <laughs> what, Simon? You mean you actually do get on the wheel? Well, occasionally. Occasionally, I do. Yeah. So we'll start about here and uh, we'll talk through it as we go. So I want to actually make some more of those flagons like you saw me do in the last clip putting on the handles. Um, okay, so the stove is here, we have heat. These need a bit of protection perhaps. We'll put a bit of plastic here just over these. 
just to protect them from the stove there. We don't want them getting crusty on the outside, do we? <laughs> so, all right. We in the picture here good? Yeah, I think we are, aren't we? Hope this video behaves. So, yeah, so I want to I want to make some more of these guys. Three pounds, you saw me here with the handle. These are drying now. I've been holding them back a bit so that they don't crack. Always good idea, put a bit of plastic over your pots once you put a handle on or an appendage to keep it from cracking. Slow that process of drying down. Always a good idea. So, I've got to make the body of that, you see. I've got to make that body. So I've got to keep that, I'm going to keep that in front of me there. Yeah, so what tools have we got? We've got leather, leather, throwing stick, sponge stick, yes, needle tools, yes, got needle tools, twisted cut off wire, yes, got that. All right, so we're ready to go. Okay. Mirror. Don't forget a mirror. You need a mirror. If you've never thrown with a mirror, go out and get yourself a mirror like this. Set it in a lump of clay. Have it there, right there, where you can give you gives you that extra viewing angle that you don't have when you're here on top of the pot. So centering it down, coning it up, centering it down. Breaking in. So these are not trimmed in the base so I can... If you're in doubt about the depth through here, just take a needle tool and you can measure it, you see. You don't want it too thick through the base, neither do you want it thin. You probably should be aiming for a quarter of an inch thick for a pot like this, I would say. Okay, right. Cone it in, push it in. Now do start lifting. Now you can lift like, like I am. That's one way of doing it. Uh, or you can you can get underneath it with your knuckle. That's a different way of doing it. Um, for larger pieces of clay, that's not a bad idea. Saves you, saves you buckling your fingers. I mean, it's more rigid. That's what I'm trying to say. Let's move the camera around that way a bit because I want to drop my head down a touch. We don't want my big head getting in the way. So, something like that. So you, you notice the form, you see? This is the classic lifting angle that you should be aiming for when you lift your pot. Okay, you don't want a vertical shape at this stage, you want it coned in. Okay, it's going to help the clay, it's going to help the clay move. Notice my hands are joined together, the thumbs are touching. Contact between the hands makes for a smoother lift. Okay. So we're going to go down there, fetch out the clay, lift it, and as you notice, I'm kind of shaping it as I go. Water, 
keep the water flowing. Now keep it in at the top. See if you let it get too wide at the top, it'll run away from you. You won't be able to get him back in again properly. Let's get these glasses out of the way because they're getting in the way, aren't they? So you can see the shape is approximately, let's just get my ruler a minute. Um, so that is eight and a half, must have been thrown probably a good nine inches. So, yeah, so you, you get your height, but you know, as, you've, as you belly it out, of course, the height was gonna, is gonna go down, isn't it? Three quarters, eight and three quarters. Collar in like this using six points of contact, you see? All right, like that. Not like that, like that. So get your hands dead opposite one another when you do that. Don't do it and then you leave a gap here between these two fingers here because the clay will try to will try to escape, you see. Have you ever had clay escape from you? Okay, I think that's going to be my last lift. I've got to get it up there. Now I've got to fill out the form here at the top a bit. Dee, dee, dee. Yeah. <laughs> Well, now then, let's let's bring it. Uh, hang on, wait a minute. Let's just get some. Now's the time. Get yourself a sponge stick if you don't have one, because you need one, especially at this stage of the game. Now, bringing it in. You see, I'm collaring it. Burr constrict the the boy. That camera's still on. I don't know why the other day the camera just decided to switch itself off. It does that sometimes. Um, okay. So. So you've got to get yourself enough material, you see, at the top here. To be able to form the the top of the pot. Now, what you can do, and I sometimes do do this here at the top, just roll him over at the top here. Like that, and so it gives you it gives you a bit extra beefiness at the top there. You see, which is you want that. You don't want it to be mean at the top. You want the top to be okay. Let's just just have a look. Always good to get off the wheel. Have a look. Um, use your throwing stick at this stage to, like I'm doing, to refine the shape, okay? So 
See, one thing that we as potters have got to be is very shape conscious, isn't it? Do you agree? Shape conscious. Yeah. We're all about shapes, aren't we, and form. Okay, so right, right down at the bottom here, because it has a little bit of a, a that one there has got a little bit of a turnout at the base, you see. It's almost like a little bit of a collar at the bottom. It's not a collar, but it's a, it's a little bit of a foot, you see, that, that kind of comes out at the bottom there. So I'm just, creating that now using my throwing stick and my finger together working together there now here let me give it a bit of that uh, give it a little bit of this and a little bit of that I sometimes use a corner of my throwing stick here just to put a kind of line up the side here. Like that. It's just a little detail. Yeah, a little optional extra, you know. A little flurry. <laughs> you don't have to do it. Good idea. Clean your wheel head off a little bit before you you cut him off. But we've forgotten one thing, haven't we? And that is get your chamois. Get your chamois. Just give him a little leather there, like that. Okie dokie. Are we perfectly satisfied with the form? Cast your beady eye one. One more time. Yeah. You see, you want to get the line of the pot, the shape right. It's so important, isn't it, to get the shape right. You know, there's too many pots out there that are poorly formed. The form is not good. And then they put some gaudy glaze on it, you see. It's like a smoke screen. You can't see then the shape of the pot hardly because it's so covered in this gaudy glaze. So you get the shape right first before you get hung up on your glaze. Get the form right. Just get the fundamentals right first. Okay? Let's just whip this off the tripod. Come in for a bit of detail. Here on the top you can see there the rolled over lip. A little bit of detail underneath. Um, that little turnout down there on the at the foot there, which is like that one over here, you see. It's just got that little. Well, you know what? That gives the pot gives it a little bit of a style difference, a little bit of difference in the form. But it also, if you think about it, pots like these, it might be get put down a little bit hard, you know, on the tabletop maybe. You know, they might have put it down a little bit of a crunch. And so having a bit more clay just at this point just gives it a little bit more beef, beefiness. Where's the beef? <laughs> Where's the beef? Okay, folks, so that's waiting for a... Uh, that's waiting now for the little strap handle like you saw me do in the last videos, the last video. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope this has been of some help to you. Three pounds of clay, have a go doing one of these with a little strap handle. They're fun to do. Yeah, and go to my website, simonleachpottery.com. I am going to be having, um, I just ordered a batch of trim tools today, another 50 of them. So if you're interested in a trim tool, 
uh, it's sort of like a Korean type tool. These, these next batch that I'm having done are going to be like round, hang on, I can show you one somewhere here. Yeah, they're sort of loosely based on this. It's not exactly like this one because this one's a bit worn. But uh, this has got basically the ends are the same on both ends. But the ones I'm going to have are going to have a square end on one end and a round end on the other. Okay? So if that interests you, write to me. You may want to say, Simon, I want one of those. Yeah, if you do want one, you, you better, they sell out very quickly. So if, you, if you're interested in one, let me know. We'll put one aside for you. So, yes, simonleachpottery.com is the website. We have workshops there every month going right the way through till November, I think. You'll see that there's a workshop every month there. So we can take up to six people. Um, so please join us. And above all, keep practicing. And I will see you soon. Bye-bye.